Today I've got the new Raylite Quad Dawn by Meritac. This is a Countycom exclusive light. It produces up to 3200 lumens out of four Cree XPL high LEDs and 5000 Kelvin and can be powered off an 18650 or 21700 battery. I really like the dimpled pattern on here. It's kind of like a golf ball. It's got a titanium clip with titanium screws and a click button at the top. Let's take an in-depth look during this review. Hey guys, if you're not following me on social media, I'd really appreciate it. On my Facebook and Instagram pages, I try and keep you up to date with what I'm doing behind the scenes of the channel and post industry news too from time to time. YouTube has some new stats that are pretty shocking. Up to 75% of you aren't subscribed to this channel on my more popular videos. So make sure you hit that subscribe button now and that bell icon so you'll be notified of new videos every week. Countycom is offering my viewers an exclusive 10% off with the code liquid retro. I'll have that in the comments below, so make sure you check that out if you're interested in this light. Here is the packaging that the Relight Meritac Quad Dawn comes in. It's a very simple kind of plastic box here, orange. It's got clips on all three sides here. And when you open it up, the light's protected here in foam. And what you see here is what you get. You get some spare O-rings, you get an adapter tube for an 18650. You can run the light on that 20 one 700 or the 18650 and you get the light itself. Countycom is selling these with Samsung 40T 21700 batteries. That's not what I'm running here today, but uh, that's what it does come with. So this light is made from 6061 aluminum and is type three hard anodized in a gray matte finish. I really like the look of it. It's basic, but uh, something a little bit different. If we start at the tail cap, we can see we've got a recessed rubber button in here. It's got a mechanical switch with a nice uh, mechanical sound to it. If I've got it up to the microphone here. It's got a texture to it. And you can see the screws for the clip there. So easy to replace this clip. If you want to do one of the uh, steel flame style clips, the bolt holes here will fit but the uh, clip itself comes with is similar to what was on the Dawn series of flashlights from Raylight. And it's a fairly thick titanium clip and more about that here in a minute. You do have two titanium screws that holds it on that are purple anodized. Opposite, you've got the Meritac logo with the serial number. There are only 500 of these lights produced. Mine happens to be number 122. And that's the only branding on the light, which I like. The body and tail are a one piece design. There's no seam here at the edge. And the body tube itself has this dimpled pattern, kind of like golf balls that I really like. Countycom says this increases grip surface by up to 300% over standard and early. I don't know how they come up with that calculation, but overall, I just like the feel of it in my hand. It feels nice and it fits nice in my hand too. It's just almost the perfect size for me. The head here, comes apart, it grows in diameter. Threads are square cut and nicely greased as you can see there. And here's what the inside of the head looks like. I've got a 21700 battery in there mounted right now and it's pretty secure. The head features these four teardrop shapes similar to what was on other Raylite designs like the LAN and the Gemini. At the front bezel, you've got this aluminum piece here. It's got just a little bit of crenulations and that's nice because when you turn the light on, you can see it leaks out just a little bit of light here to let you know it's on if it is um, staying on its head. And the light does tail stand just fine. You've got your sapphire lens underneath there and that's great for scratch resistance. Then you've got your quad optic. It's a Carrillo style optic. And underneath that you've got a Countycom's calling Afterglow. It's, it's a glowing gasket. It's not turbo glow, but it does pretty decent. I measured the light at an overall length of 121.78 millimeters. Minimum diameter on the body was 25.5 millimeters. Maximum diameter on the head at 28.2. Weight with my 18650 battery is 140.1 grams. With the 30Q and the spacer, the weight is 127.6 grams. This light was narrower for a 21700 than I was expecting. And here are a couple comparisons to similar 21700 or quad lights. I've got the Thrunite T2, which I have reviewed. Different price category for this light. Actually similar output, also runs a 21700. And you can see it's just a little bit shorter, but it is fatter in the head design and the body itself. Not much, but just a little bit. Then I've got my Raylite Crystal here, and this is obviously a different sized light. It's running an 18350 battery, uh, but it's a quad design and another Raylite, so I just thought I'd bring it out there. Um, head diameter is very, very similar and beam output is somewhat similar too. I'll have examples of that in my night shot. For retention, this light has the same pattern Raylight has used on the Dawn and Gemini for clips on the flashlights. It's a wide paddle clip 
and I've had no issues with mine here. It's got a the uh, popular steel flame clip screw size, so if you wanted to put on a different aftermarket clip, you've got a lot of options to do so. And with the design here, most clips should work pretty well. The stock clip is about 1.2 millimeter thick titanium and quite stiff. If we can see here, I can barely pull it out. That's good, it's gonna stay where you put it. It is a little bit hard to fit over your pockets at first, but it seems to be loosening up just a little bit and getting better. As I mentioned, I like how this light fits in my hand. It just fits nicely and that texture provides a nice amount of grip without ripping up your pocket or hand or anything like that. So for me, that's a win. You can also cigar grip it pretty easily works good to do that too. The Raylite Quad Dawn by Meritac is using the Cree XPL High LEDs in 5000 tint, so it fits that classic neutral white tint, but to me it seems a little bit maybe on the cool side of 5000 Kelvin. My preference in recent years has opted to warmer emitters, but this is pretty nice too. Overall with this optic, it's a flood, and there's not much distortion, which is not something you see with all quad. The beam has just a little bit of not roundness to the beam itself, it is, like I said, mostly a flood, but you do have this kind of focused area and not much of a corona itself. This is a four mode light. You've got ultra low at two lumens. I'll call it medium at 250 lumens, high at 1400 lumens and turbo at 3200 lumens. And the middle two modes exhibit some PWM. It's not bad in my eye or camera. I don't see it, but my uh, oscilloscope can. Okay, we're in the darkness with the Raylite Mertak. Dawn Custom Quad 21700 light. Got it in the lowest mode. Two lumens here tonight. Bumping up. Here's 250. And it's starting to rain here, so that's why we're on my deck versus at other locations. We can see the beam shape here. It's nice and floody. 250 is good illumination, good heat control out of these Cree XPL high LEDs at 5000 Kelvin. You can see it's a fairly neutral tint. Bumping up here is what I'm going to call high. This is 1400 lumens. See that nice floody shape? I can illuminate the tree over here. Nice job. This is a floody beam. And this is the full 3200 lumens turbo. It's thrown out to my into my neighbor's fence, no problem. And you can even start to see the trees. And that's pretty impressive from a flood. Does a great job of lighting up the big tree here. This light is starting to get pretty hot. As you'll come to find out, this is a very hot light if you leave it on for about 30 minutes it gets to untouchable range. But County Com really does recommend you only use this for about 90 seconds in this turbo mode. And it's at the point where now where it's hot enough, I don't wanna hold it that long. So here is my Raylite Crystal. This is also quad emitter light. Some people wanted to see the beam difference between the crystal here and the Menorac Custom here. So this is the Meritac light here and the Raylite Crystal. Very similar overall beam profiles between the Meritac and the Crystal. The Meritac is a little bit brighter and a little bit broader, it looks like. So one more comparison here is the Thrunite T2. It's a 21700 light, similar to 4000 lumens. Um, it's a little bit floodier beam. And here is the Meritac Custom Quad. It's a little bit tighter, but still very floody. And the T2. Just wanted to show the afterglow here of the Meritac. And you can see it's fairly bright here. This is after turbo, just a few minutes of charging it, or a few seconds of charging it. But it's not turbo glow, so it does fade out over time. But when it is on, it is pretty nice and fairly bright. The Raylite Quad Dawn by Meritac is quoted as having an output of 2 lumens, 250, 1400, and 32 lumens. I did my run tests with a X-Star High Drain 21700 battery here. Good batteries. Um, these are a little bit lower capacity than what the light will ship with. So my run times are going to be a little bit shorter, but it's a great battery and it's what I had available. I did complete runtime tests in turbo because that's how I test all my lights from the brightest mode they can all the way down. Conicom doesn't recommend you leave turbo on for more than 90 seconds because of the heat. And I agree with him on this. Um, the light starts stepping down pretty soon after you turn it on. At two minutes and 25 seconds, it's down to 50% relative output. From here it holds itself for an hour before stepping down and ending around the hour 15 mark when you're on that top mode. During the time this light gets super hot, a whopping 78.9 C, which is 174 Fahrenheit. This is dangerously hot. 
for both the battery and your skin. Again, this isn't recommended. Countycom only recommends using that turbo mode for 90 seconds or so. Really, when you do that, the light stays a more reasonable 60 degrees centigrade. I tested high mode and fell a little bit short of the two hour quoted runtime, but my battery, like I mentioned, is also 800 milliamp hours short of what, what uh, I'd expect. So I think the runtimes County Com is quoting is reasonable. The UI here is super simple. It's a four mode flashlight with moonlight, low, high, and turbo. Mode spacing varies quite a bit between two, 250, 1400, and 3200 lumens. And the mechanical button can accept half presses too. So here I've got it in the lowest output and I can half press here is uh, the next mode up. Again, next mode and full turbo, and I can lock it on to stay where I'm at. It's really, really simple. The light doesn't have memory, so it will keep advancing. So here I am in turbo, uh, lock it on, turn it off and press it again, and the light is on low. So for me, the pros are, I love that golf ball style texture on the body. It's different and functional. It's the gray anodizing here is nice too. Again, I'm really enjoying flashlight manufacturers who come out with a color other than black as standard. The light is surprisingly small and light for a 21700 quad. There's not an aggressive step down due to thermals, meaning it stays for bright for as long as possible, but gets incredibly hot. And it's got a simple four mode interface with no strobe. Anyone can use this flashlight. The cons are in the continuous output, the maximum output gets super hot up to 78.4 C in my uncooled runtime tests. That's too hot to safely hold, but you only see it at the 30 minute mark. And I think most sane people will turn the light down before it reaches that hot. The pocket clip here is super stiff. It takes some effort to get into your pocket, but the flip side of that is it's secure and won't go anywhere. And there's a little bit of rattle when the 18650 adapter is installed, but that's to be expected. With the 21700, it doesn't go anywhere. My conclusion, the full name of this light, the Raylight Quad Emitter Dawn Custom Maritac LED Flashlight plus Glow Afterburner is lunacy, but the quality of the light makes up for it. For a 21700 light, it was smaller than I thought it'd be, and the slimness of the tube really helps there. This isn't something I will carry often in my front pocket for EDC for office tasks and around town, but you could carry it pretty easily if you wanted to, or in larger pockets or back pockets or stuff like that. It's not too big in a front pocket either if you wanted. It's just bigger than I want to carry. For me, it fits great in the hand and it's only made better with those dimples for grip. It's a great walking the dog type of light on high at 1400 lumens and that floody beam is more than you need. When with that two hours run time, it's plenty for most people. One more mode between low at 250 lumens and high at 1400 lumens is something I'd like. I think it'd make the light a little bit more useful and to optimize battery life and light output. That says on turbo for continuous use this light gets dangerously hot 78.9 centigrade or 178 fahrenheit is burn you hot that said you only saw it at the 31 minute mark and i don't think this is very realistic in the real world because most people when a light starts getting this hot will turn it off or turn it down and you'll never really probably see those temperatures i don't recommend running your light to see those temperatures that long because it's not great for your battery or the light either overall this is a nice flashlight at a fair price i enjoy it and i'm glad i have one it's easy to recommend and it's a nice size too remember these are limited to only 500 lights and only being sold to con Countycom. So check the description below for a link to their website to pick up one if you're interested. And don't forget to use that code liquid retro to save 10% on your order. As always, guys, if you've got any questions, please let me know. I'll do my best to answer them. And as always, I appreciate you liking these videos, subscribing to the channel and following me on social media. So I'll make sure I'll catch you on the next review soon.